Hello and welcome to my homeschool curriculum choice video series. This spring I'm going to do a variety of videos on all the different choices that we are making and have made for what we're going to be using for the next homeschool year. For this video, I am going to share what my seventh grader is going to be doing mostly independently for math, language arts, foreign language, which is Spanish, science, civics, geography, and art. I am really excited about what it is that we have chosen. She had a big say in what it is that we are going to be doing next year and I'm, I've really been feeling like she is ready for a challenge. She's ready for a little bit more in-depth studies in school and so I'm excited for her entry into middle school. So for seventh grade math, we are using Math UC. According to their schedule, pre-algebra is what you use for seventh grade. So we have the student workbooks and those are $44 on their website. They do have free shipping. And then it also comes with the test booklet, which we rarely use the test booklet, but I don't know, maybe as we get into more advanced math, we'll use that more, but up until this point, we haven't really used the test booklets. And then I get the instructor's manual and the DVD on used on eBay, and that was $36. We've loved using Matthew C, and it really has done a fabulous job with teaching my kids mastery of concepts. Next is language arts, and as we have for years, we will be continuing with using the good and the beautiful. One of the things that I love about the good and the beautiful is that in addition to the literature and grammar and usage and punctuation, they incorporate art and geography. Not only is it an art study, but it is also creating your own art. And so for seventh grade, it is line drawing with shading is the focus. While you could get up to the fifth grade level for free that you could print out at home yourself, I like to pay extra and get them bound and we've been doing that for years. And so once we got into the sixth and seventh grade level and they were not free anymore, it wasn't you know, a big deal for me to add that in. I will say that for sixth grade, I paid to get the answer key printed and sent to us. But my understanding from Jenny Phillips' video from Valentine's Day is that up to eighth grade is going to be free and available on the website. So I'm gonna wait until this summer to see that's supposed to happen in June. And if that is true, then I'll be able to get the answer key just off of the site and be able to use it that way. So for the course book, it was $26 plus shipping. And then if you want to get the companion that has the answer key, that is $14. Again, I'm hoping that's gonna be free this summer. Additionally, for level eight, she just does two book studies, Wild Like the Foxes, and also a book about Abraham Lincoln. I went ahead and got the level eight book study book, which is Wild Like the Foxes. We really like Brave Writer for literature studies, and so I am gonna wait until Julie Bogart's announcements in June for what she's doing for her, for the Brave Writer program for next year. But I really liked the reviews and what this is supposed to be about. And I figured if this summer the level eight actually is free, I can just pull that level eight book study and we'll combine one level eight with her level seven course book since I didn't get the reader with this. So for the past couple years, my daughter has passed on the readers and we just don't do that portion of the curriculum. But I thought if we pulled in the level eight, we could pull that in in place of the reader and possibly do a book study for that. So this book is $9. And again, I'm hoping the book study part is provided, but if not, it is $14. So Spanish is something that we have been doing for years, and I'm just really excited about what we're gonna do this year. So I have this easy Spanish step-by-step -step book from McGraw-Hill that I purchased on Amazon, and it just starts out with the basics and then builds onto it. And so my seventh grader is going to go ahead and fill this out and the answers are in the back. As a supplement to this, 
we are going to do Destinos. I recently watched a curriculum video where this was highlighted and I thought it was a really great idea. And so I will be sure to link her channel below. But Destinos is a Spanish telenova, kind of like a soap opera mystery TV show. And I remember watching it when I was learning Spanish. And so this is kind of your typical textbook. And I found this used for about $11. And so we will just go through it. This says before viewing, and then there's after viewing. And so the idea here is, is that the telenova is, is mostly in Spanish and there's a mystery and you kind of follow along and they have cultural information. And one of the things that I have discovered is that if you go to this Destinos Telenovela, wordpress.com the videos are linked there the workbook the textbook the uh, script for everything is all linked there someone has gone to the effort to put all of that information into this one location and then you can go to learner.org and that is where all the videos are and so it's pretty much a free Spanish curriculum and I just went ahead and chose to get the book used. But again, it wasn't very expensive at $11. So for history this year, we are going to go from about the 1800s to modern times. And I got a state notebook that has stickers for the birds, the trees, the flowers for each state, as well as kind of a report layout. It has the population, manufacturing, crops, minerals, waterways, significant people, and there is a page for every single state in here. I got this on Rainbow Resource. It is made by Geo Matters, and it is $12.95 on the Rainbow Resource website. So we'll do this kind of as geography, but in conjunction with history, we will use the mini page Book of States as the spine. It has a mini page for each state. I've actually looked this up to see if I can link it and it's actually really hard to find. It is out there, but it's hard to find. And it is about $6. And in addition to the mini page, I also have this Atlas of the United States where my seventh grader will be able to find a lot more information about the states than what is in the mini page. Again, it's the same idea of two pages, but I think it's a little bit more in depth. We will see. But my hope here is that we're learning to do independent research using spines. And then in addition to that, I love these K-12 draw the whatever location. And so she will also use this for drawing the US as well. So we'll do this geography with our history. And then just to supplement, I have this songs that teach states and capitals with the CD. And while I don't think we'll need this information part, I do want to sing the song so that we can learn our capitals and states really well. So in my state, a seventh or eighth grader is able to complete requirements that you, if you don't get them done in seventh and eighth grade, you would then have to get them done in high school for a high school credit. So there are some such as civics, geography, art and health and safety that you can do in middle school that still count towards your secondary education. So that will free up our options for what we decide to pull in for our high school credits. And so we're really trying to get through these asterisk ones in seventh and eighth grade. So I've gone ahead and color coded what we wanna hit in seventh grade and what we wanna hit in eighth grade. And so that will be the next portion of this video of what we're gonna be doing. And that will be things that she's doing independent in science, history, and geography. So we'll have different stuff that we're doing in our family study time. This is all stuff that she'll do independently. So because we have health and safety credits that we need to get done, we are going to do a nutrition science curriculum we got from Rainbow Resource for $24 is six units. It comes with two answer keys. The idea here is, is with the health and safety 
category. This will teach about a balanced diet and healthy foods and healthy eating and what our bodies need. It is Christian based, so it starts with Bible verses and explaining the scriptural references to eating as well as balancing with it out with the science of nutrients found in food with carbohydrates, fat, protein, minerals, water, fiber, vitamins, all of that. And they're all built that way. The other thing that I like is it provides recipes and challenges. So one of the challenges is write down everything that you eat or try to learn to like a new food that you haven't tried before or liked before. So it gives you challenges in each unit, recipes, and she will choose one of these to make for us as a family, and so she's getting some life skills in there. So I'm excited about this. She will do probably one of these a month, so it's not a high pressure situation, but just something for her to learn about nutrition. And then we will do the maturation and sexual reproduction unit study from The Good and the Beautiful. So this is a from a godly perspective. There's a lot of information in here that honestly we will probably not do the whole thing with her, but we'll hit on the birds and the bees and some of those core components. And then we will do history of the US and history of PA. I will do a separate video on what we're doing for history, but there is also a civics requirement. Something that I've learned about constitution curriculum, and correct me here if I'm wrong, but I looked at a lot of different books and curriculum about the constitution, and it seems like for whatever reason, there is not an unbiased presentation of the Constitution. It's either a conservative bias or a liberal bias. And I really would just like a neutral explanation of what the Constitution is. So I found our con Constitution rocks on Rainbow Resource and this was $11. And the Good and the Beautiful curriculum is free, or at least I got it for free. So I have it on my laptop. I will pull in the activities um, but I wanted something that was a little bit more exciting to look at than the Good and the Beautiful curriculum was, and so I really thought this just made it more visually appealing. And so we're gonna try this for her to go through for civics, and then I also have this How Our Government Works For You When You Grow Up To Vote by Eleanor Roosevelt. It's illustrated by Grace Lynn. We read this during the last presidential election cycle, and so I will have her go through this again. And there is another in our Blossom and Root history curriculum. She suggested for which we stand, how our government works, and why it matters. And she says this could be used as a spine to study civics in depth for middle and high school learners. And so I also have that as well that I got on Amazon for $9. And so we this will be our main spine, and then we will use the other two books to supplement and the activities in the Good and the Beautiful curriculum. And then next, she has a geography credit, and we are doing the state notebook as part of our history learning. But again, I wanted to be able to give her some independence and some skills at learning research. And so I found this Guest Hollows Geography curriculum. High, it's a high school level. It says it is adaptable for middle school. And this was $41. It is all online. So they provide a textbook, huge textbook, that has videos embedded and it has all kinds of information in it. You can actually access that textbook for free and it's phenomenal. So I will be sure to link it below, but I did wanna support all of their work that they had done putting that together. And so I went ahead and purchased the curriculum as well. It has, and again, I don't wanna share too much because this is their hard work, but they have linked pages and pages and pages and pages of videos and books and they tell you 
if there is content that might be more, more mature or violent or any kind of potential issues, they make sure that they demarcate that so that you know as a parent um, if that's something that you would agree with your son or daughter reading or watching or studying. It also has a supply list which I love, a pretty hefty multi-page supply list, as well as a notebook, huge notebook. It's like 130 pages that you can print out for the portfolio, but for filling out answers that tie directly with the textbook. And then the other thing that it provides is a huge, it's literally like 300 pages, schedule that tells you each week what chapters to read in the text, the online textbook, and then what to supplement it with as far as the spot, the additional spines they suggest, and then even the added on reading. And there's things in here like the manga cookbook when you go and study Japan. Just so many really interesting and wonderful things. And so frankly, this is way more than what my seventh grader will get to. We're literally going to do the basics at the beginning and then I'm gonna allow her to choose kind of some of the geographical regions that she is interested in and go about it that way. But I looked at this curriculum as a long game. There is so much here and I'm so excited to unpack this and to use this along with the beautiful feet references that we have. So I really want to kind of take some time like I normally do on our school break to really kind of dive through this and figure out where pieces of this can supplement and what books are at the library and I'm just really excited about this and she is too and so that will be her geography credit here. And then she also has an art credit that we can use and so I think we're going to use these. Now these books are almost $20 a piece. They're $18.95 on Rainbow Resource. Rainbow Resource has the best price. And we just collect a couple a year. So you saw we're already gonna do the States one in conjunction with our history. But for this year, we're going. I'm going to use these for art. So the two new ones that we got were Africa and Oceania. And there's a lot of different ways that we can utilize these for art. You could do collage, you could actually do, not for this one, but for some of these string outlines. I thought we could actually do some with tissue paper, cut them out and put them on the window for like a stained glass look. So, so many different ways that we can make these be multimedia projects. And so that is what we are going to do for our art credit. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out the other videos in my homeschool curriculum choice series this spring, including what we're using for fourth grade individual subjects, as well as what we are using for science this year, individually as well as a family, and then also what we're choosing for our history curriculum. I'm also hoping to share what we're using for Morning Basket and also any of our read alouds and individual books that we're gonna choose for next year. Until next time. <laughs>